Hello. This video is about the new Catalyst emulator SK07. It differs from previous versions that it has five wires, and it can work with oxygen sensors with floating mass. I will tell about them later. It does not have regulators, but it can be adjusted to any vehicle. So let's start with assembling the emulator SK07. Here is the model of the car sensor. The color marking of the oxygen sensor corresponds to the marking on Japanese vehicles. Two black wires, white and blue wires. The black wires in this sensor are heating. Blue is the signal. White is usually the mass. We need to find a heating wire to get power. In other words, the ignition wire, which is always powered with 12 volts. This can be done in two ways. First, when the engine is running, we can measure the voltage on both black wires. One of them will constantly be powered with 12 volts. The second way, with the ignition on, disconnect the connector and measure the voltage at its contacts. You should take power from the contact powered with 12 volts. In this case, we take power from the white wire. It is connected to the mass inside the control unit. So let's find the wire powered with 12 volts. So, this wire has the voltage of 13.5 volts. Here, I'll show you. The second wire will conditionally be of 0 volts. So we've found the power wire, and this will be the power for the emulator. We clean the power wire. The blue wire is a signal. We cut it apart. Like this. So the emulator takes the reference signal from the oxygen sensor and corrects it according to certain algorithms. The assembling of the simulator is very similar to assembling SK02. And in the case of Toyota, it's exactly the same. The blue emulator wire is the input signal. We connect it to the oxygen sensor. In this example, I will not insulate and solder wires. Now I'll just show how it looks. The yellow wire is the processed output signal heading to the control unit. If you have an unfunctioning oxygen sensor, then you can take the signal from the front oxygen sensor. This can be done if the front oxygen sensor has a signal from 0 to 1 volts. We connect the black wire of the emulator. The mass is a minus in the power supply of the emulator SK07. And power is connected last. The red wire of the emulator to the 12 volts black wire of the oxygen sensor. That's all with assembling the emulator. Now it's connected. Note that the white wire remains free. European vehicles have different color marking. There will be two white wires, it's heating. A black wire is a signal. A gray wire is the mass on European vehicles. 
Note that the signal will differ about 2 volts in some cars, especially American. For example, Chrysler, Dodge, Mitsubishi. We do not connect the black emulator wire to the oxygen sensor on these cars. The signal wire of the oxygen sensor is powered with 2.5 volts in these cars. And the emulator has a white wire and it should be connected to the minus signal of the oxygen sensor. The black wire of the emulator must be connected to the mass. In this video, it is conditional. American and European cars have the same color marking of the oxygen sensor wires. Two white wires are hidden. Black wire is the signal. Blue in this example. So this is a connection scheme for the emulator for Chrysler and Dodge. Two white wires are hidden. A gray wire is the minus signal instead of white wire. A black wire is a plus signal instead of blue wire. We cut it apart. This emulator provides the possibility of tuning channels. There are no regulators here, but adjustment is done as follows. For example, you can short circuit the white wire to the power wire of 12 volts and enter the setting mode, or you can use a magnet. The simulator has modern algorithms, so this is the latest advancement in the field of catalyst emulation. It can emulate the internal impedance of the oxygen sensor, emulate the heating of the oxygen sensor, determine the operation mode of the engine, and the engine load by the oxygen sensor signal. And it also has many other functions and parameters comparing to other emulators. Emulator is KO7 can also emulate the internal resistance of the oxygen sensor. While the oxygen sensor is not heated, the output of the emulator will have an infinitely high output impedance. Also, the emulator is capable of configuring directly on the vehicle without connecting to a computer. You can also adjust parameters of the emulator is KO7. For example, you can easily reset fuel consumption or change its settings if necessary. To do this, you need to short circuit the white wire on the power wire, 12 volts, or with the help of a magnet. On the one hand, the emulator is equipped with a light diode, and on the other, with a magnetic field sensor. In order to see what settings are set now, you need to tap the emulator with a magnet, like this. Look, now the indicator flashed three times. It implies that the third table of the fuel mixture correction is selected in the settings. A total of four fuel mixture adjustment tables are installed in the emulator's memory. The higher the number of the table, the richer is the fuel mixture, hence the greater is the voltage and the less fuel is supplied. These tables can be changed. To do this, briefly tap the emulator with a magnet and the number of the table will be switched. These short-term flashes show the response time of the emulator. And so look. One, two, three, four. It means that the table four is selected now. Tables are switched by a circle. Tap again, and the emulator switched to the first table. Once again, two flashes, and the second table. Mind the response time. Now you can switch the table. In normal mode, you can switch after two long flashes and two short flashes. So we're done with the switching of the fuel tables, 
In order to change them, we need to briefly tap the emulator with a magnet. To switch the response time, you need to hold the magnet for about one and a half seconds. So I hold the magnet for one and a half seconds, and the response time increases. Now there are three short flashes, another one and a half seconds, and we get four short flashes. And so the response will be delayed in time. It is better to set the fastest response of one short flashing for some cars equipped with the oxygen sensor set far from the engine. Like this. One short flashing is the fastest response for the oxygen sensor. Under this video, I'll place links with instructions on how to configure the simulators. The setup procedure is very similar to the emulator SKO2. The point is to achieve fuel corrections close to zero of the rare oxygen sensor, for example, B1C2 or B2C2. In other words, if you want to reduce fuel consumption, you need to increase the number of the table. So, with increasing the number of the table, the fuel supply decreases. The fuel corrections tend to zero. This LED in the emulator has a dual function. In normal mode, it also shows how rich the mixture is. If the LED glows, the mixture is rich, and the voltage on the oxygen sensor is greater than 0.45 volts. If the diode does not glow, the mixture is poor, and the voltage is less than 0.45 volts. As for troubleshooting of the emulator, all the problems that can arise with this emulator are solved in the same way as with the emulator SKO2. Under the video, there is a link to the manual to the emulator SKO2. The following video contains typical problems that sometimes arise and ways to fix them. Быстрее должен быть, хаотично, но быстрее. Ну, тут пытается. 